Hello everyone, it's Haley. Welcome to Mom Life Vermont. I'm here today. I'm actually on my way to the doctors to get some stuff checked out related to my polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I figured since my car is newly tired and no longer shakes like a crazy person, I figured on my commute to the doctors today, we shall chat about my polycystic ovarian syndrome kind of from like the lead up to the diagnosis to the diagnosis to everything in between so if you're interested in that be sure to stick around I didn't know what PCOS is it's polycystic ovarian syndrome it is a endocrine issue that happens to many women it seems I think it's one of the leading causes of infertility but basically it's your ovaries and some of your hormones are not working right and it just causes like a mirage of problems. That is a very, very, very simple way, I guess, of looking at it or my understanding of it. If you want more details on it, I will put a link down in the description. And by all means, uh, let me know down in the comments any questions you might have or questions that you want me to answer. My PCOS journey, let's see, when did it start? So I, let's, I guess, start with like a period. <laughs> I started my period super, super young. I think I might have been in like fifth grade, fourth or fifth grade, just really young. I, I had it once and then it never really regulated. And then as I got older, or like to the point where you probably should have been having your period, I just never had a regular period and for the longest time people were like, oh, that's normal, oh, it's normal, oh, it's normal, oh, it's normal, oh, it's normal. And finally, as I was starting to get older in terms of like 16, 17, really when they felt like things should have been normalizing, especially since I had started so young, I finally went and I saw a new doctor within my pediatrics office. So her name was Dr. Heidi. Dr. Heidi is still there. My sister actually has her daughters go to Dr. Heidi. So anyway, saw this new woman doctor, I think fresh out of med school, not med school, fresh out of whatever doctors do after med school. So kind of like very, very new to being a doctor. And it was almost like the first, it was, it was the first time I saw her. She was like, I think you have this thing called PCOS. And she like listed off like, like uh, weird, uh, abnormal periods, uh, this hair growth. And at that point, if you guys have not seen the confession series, at this point where I was being diagnosed was also the point where my lovely facial hair journey began. She had just kind of noticed that there were these, kind of had to start checking some boxes. Because PCOS is not so much here's a blood test and then you're either positive or you're negative. It is really a combination of symptoms that are used to diagnose the syndrome. So for me, she had noticed that one, I wasn't having a regular period. It was really all over the place. I had the facial hair. Um, I had these like browning spots on my body. I didn't really notice them, but she definitely noticed them. And then we went and got a blood test. And from there, I believe I went to the OBJ at GYN. But as a 16 slash 17 year old who was terrified of boys and not sexually active at all going to see an OBGYN was very daunting to the point where I said no <laughs> or I just didn't follow up properly like they were just basically talking about we're gonna do an ultrasound and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that but at that point it was interesting because they were I don't know if it was Research has enhanced because I feel like treatments are more of an option now. But at that point, they were really like, you only need to worry about this when you're going to have a baby. Like, beyond that, like, there's not, there's not much you have to worry about. It's really just when you want to have a baby. So there were certain things that they were going to do. Like, they put me on birth control. It seems like they put every person who has polycystic ovarian syndrome and they're young on birth control. I hated it. But anyway... 
at that point what they were basically trying to do was not trying to get me to be pregnant but was basically trying to get me to have a period so that I would shed my lining because not having a period although at the time I was like woohoo I don't really have a period I don't have to worry about pads and tampons when I'm playing sports or when I'm living my life so it was kind of like a godsend to not have a period the way that some of my friends did but at the doctors I had discovered that not doing that could lead to problems like not having a period could lead to certain cancers and just other problems that could have happened so they scared me into birth control so I hopped on to birth control absolutely hated it so for birth control at least for me even now I feel as though my hormones are all out of whack because I have PCOS so when you throw a hormone on top of an imbalanced hormonal girl, I definitely went crazy, like psycho crazy, not good crazy. Definitely was not my cup of tea. And as I've gotten older, I actually no longer want to go on birth control even now. This is a whole nother story, but I have a blood clotting issue that I just worry about getting blood clots when I'm on birth control. So I just have decided not to do birth control. But anyway, back when I was 16, 17, I went on birth control. And then I started to work on getting rid of my facial hair because that, for me, the biggest issue with all of the PCOS at that point in my life was the facial hair. That was my biggest issue. So I went on the birth control on and off for a couple of years and then I just kind of gave it up when I went to college. College was a very, very, very interesting for me and my PCOS, I guess. So I kind of went to college with this understanding that there was nothing that they could do to make this PCOS better and I didn't really have to worry about it. I just kind of had to deal with it. That's what I knew, that's what I understood, that's the way that I felt when I left. So I basically went to college for five and a half years and did not do a single thing with my PCOS. Not a single thing. Now in that, that time, I had kind of gotten accustomed to the fact that I would not be having any children, had some pretty serious relationships throughout college where I even lost a boyfriend one time because I told him that I probably couldn't have kids. Probably the most devastating day of my life up until that point was that day. But I also now look back and I go, well, that was like the defining thing that made him say, see you later, well then, see you later. So it's just, it was just, I, I guess I just learned to deal with it. In college, I did electrolysis for the facial hair and all of this stuff to take care of what I thought was the only problem I would have with PCOS, which was facial hair and lack of a period. But at that point, I still didn't really mind not having a period. It came when it wanted, it left when it wanted, it just kind of did its own thing. There was no real consistency about it. It just was what it was. The last summer before I went to college, so it took me five and a half years, so this was after five years and before the half, I was in Vermont for the summer, not really thinking much of it, not tracking anything because um, not having, or the fact that I couldn't have kids and the fact that my body didn't work, I had known and that's the fact that's the way that I lived by and I probably did some really foolish things during that period of time with this knowledge. That gets to the point where I think at some point my period started regulating. I think I had lost a little bit of weight and lo and behold, I get done college and didn't have any issues getting pregnant. With that pregnancy, I didn't need any infertility. I didn't need anything, but I still had this under this belief that I was, I was told I could never have kids. So, so I could never have kids. And so I was like, this is my, my one pregnancy. This is my only pregnancy I'm ever gonna have. I'm gonna, bleh. anyway. So that pregnancy happened what happened. And we had a, I'm not really gonna get into the story. 
we had the one we had our first daughter liberty without any issues no issues at all sadly she did end up passing away but that had nothing to do with my pregnancy after we had lost liberty it was really like me back into that mindset of oh i can never have kids i can't have kids i'm i'm not supposed to have kids and i just lost my one chance to be a mom like that was it so from the, that moment on where we had lost liberty we had kind of been on like a quest for a baby we had been i had been working really hard to make sure that i was trying to lose weight and i was trying to do all this stuff but i still had this knowledge of of i'm just kind of stuck with this i have to just deal with it there's no real help for me except for fertility treatments we kind of like got ourselves situated and figured stuff out and then i think i went to my ob and i kind of got on some pills to see if i could help the process along to try and have another baby and that didn't work so then I did go to the fertility specialist at that point but it was just really really involved and very overwhelming for me at that moment in my life and I didn't feel like I was healthy enough weight wise and eating wise to like support having a baby and I felt like if I'm going to spend the money or if there's money involved I want to make sure that it's a success the first time so that, that just led to three years at that point of, of trying to have a baby on our own and not really succeeding and me being worried about not being healthy enough. So I didn't go back to fertility. And then one day, I don't know what got us to do it. I finally was like, I'm gonna go to the fertility doctor and I went back and it was like a whole new world of polycystic ovarian syndrome research had been done. And there was this whole new understanding of insulin resistance which sometimes is a side like is the cause of PCOS or or could they go hand in hand so there had been new medicines and new treatments for women with PCOS so at that point I got on this medicine called metformin which I is like almost a life-changing medication for me taking it was not the best experience I did have some pretty terrible side effects to it but it did what I was thought it was going to do what I was told it was going to do it basically allowed me to help regulate my insulin or my insulin levels on a regular basis and in turn helped curve some cravings that you have when you have PCOS which is sugar and carbs so it allowed me to put all this work that I had been doing the exercising and the work uh, the eating right and actually see results from that because if you didn't know one of the really hard things for a woman with PCOS is losing weight some women can be it is for me you can gain it like a champ but getting rid of it is hard I got on that foreman and then we had tried a new medicine to ovulate because what we had really done the interesting thing is none of this happened the first time around I went to the fertility doctor the second time I was really kind of like all in it so we were getting blood work done monthly it's amazing they could see if I if they felt I had ovulated before or after they could tell if the medicine was kind of working and one of the things that I had done realized because I had been tracking for so long is that I didn't have the traditional 28 day cycle I had a 35 ish day cycle so once we kind of had gotten the medication right and the knowledge of my cycle right Kenny and I got pregnant probably within like three months so it took us six months from the point where we actually got on the medicine to get it all right and to have a baby and that's where Kensley comes in today I'm actually heading back to the same fertility doctors clinics are at the UVM Medical Center and the hope is that although Dr. Raj who was the doctor I saw last time is not there that they will hopefully be as supportive and helpful with my journey as the last time that was a very very long maybe not very interesting story we will see how that goes I hope you guys enjoyed it be sure to let me know down in the comments if you have any. Hey everyone, guess what? My phone overheated. I didn't even know that was possible in the middle of winter. 
But anyway, I was really done my story. I was at that point where I was really just telling you if you have any questions about my story, about PCOS, about anything, about life in general, let me know down in the comments. Be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you are here. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It shows me how much support I have and it, it definitely helps my channel out a lot. And if you don't want to miss a thing, be sure to turn on the bell notifications. All right, guys, I will see you guys next time and have a great day.